And now, back to the Weather Classroom. Okay, so we know that the physical features of the Earth, mountains, oceans, deserts and stuff, all cause changes in the weather, right? But turnabout is fair play, and atmospheric features have a little something to say about how our planet shapes up. Wind, rain, heat and cold make for pretty powerful Earth movers. Sometimes it's quick. Sometimes it takes a while. But one thing's for sure, the weather above can have a big effect on the land below. If you don't think the weather makes a difference, let me tell you a little story. It started millions of years ago as a little ditch. The Colorado River ran through the Cabal Plateau, slowly cutting through the layers of rock. It took a little while, but eventually, natural forces turned the little ditch into something we call today the Grand Canyon. Makes you wonder what it will look like in a few more million years. Well, Earthquakes and volcanoes can give the landscape its basic form, but erosion and weathering do the finishing work. Weathering is the gradual breakdown of rocks due to chemical or mechanical processes, such as water, ice, or changes in temperature. Erosion is the movement of rock by wind, water, or glaciers. Erosion and weathering are really hard to tell apart, though, because they're constantly working together to change the face of our planet. Are completely still. And wind is one of the great forces that changes the face of our planet. Wind erosion does its best work in dry regions, particularly deserts, where wind-blown sand carves rocks into strange shapes. This is Monument Valley in southern Utah. You probably recognize it because of all the old western and cowboy movies that have been made here. The features of this desert landscape have been sandblasted out by hot desert winds. Pretty weird. Now for those of you that have always wondered what the difference was, Mesas are flat top hills, and buttes are the more narrow, tall columns. Learn something new every day, huh? Sand dunes are always moving, kind of like a weather road trip. You find them in deserts and along coasts beside water. They can be small, like a handful of sand, or get as big as a building, but the wind keeps on shifting them from place to place. In the really deep deserts, like the Sahara, the wind can get whipped up and start huge dust storms called haboobs. The word haboob comes from hab, the Arabic word for wind. These massive dust and wind storms can get up to 3,000 feet high. running water. Kind of hard to believe it's done more to change the surface of the earth than almost any other force. But when it teams up with gravity, it can turn mountains into molehills. When gravity pulls rock and soil down a slope, it's a process called mass wasting. And moist soil is more likely to slide down the slope than dry soil. Sometimes it's fast, more than 100 miles per hour for avalanches and landslides. Sometimes it's slow, half an inch a year. But, given enough time, mass wasting can change the shape of the planet. This is Yosemite National Park, one of the most incredible places on Earth. On a nice sunny day like today, it's hard to imagine that the third form of weathering carved out this great valley, ice. You see, if more snow falls than melts during the year, the glacier forms. Glaciers are nature's bulldozers. They creep along, picking up loose rocks and debris, and their crusty bottom acts like a giant file, scraping out the land underneath. Millions of years ago, glaciers came through this valley and carved these granite walls and left us with this magnificent valley that we see today. Other forms of weathering have shaped Yosemite Valley. Rock slides, for example, are a dynamic force here in the valley. 
rocks continue to fall through the exfoliation process, and as these rocks fall, they create granite all over the valley floor, which is actually making the valley floor rise gradually. Basically, the Merced River that cuts a path through Yosemite Valley continues to affect the valley itself. And it's a dynamic process. People come to Yosemite and they think it's always been this way, but it's a gradually changing thing through the weathering, through the river that floods in the springtime, through the rock falls that we see year round. Although people, 100 years, 200 years, the valley looks generally the same. If you look back thousands of years and thousands of years into the future, the look of Yosemite Valley is ever changing. changes in its time. It's been through ice ages and periods even warmer than what we know today. No one's exactly sure why, but some think it might be that the Earth's position has changed in relation to the sun. Some think it's because land masses have drifted around and interrupted the circulation of the ocean currents. And some scientists even think that we humans are causing our planet's current warming trend, called global warming, by burning too much fossil fuel and increasing what's called the greenhouse effect. There's a lot we don't understand yet about how our world works. But if there's one thing we know for sure, it's that our little planet is still changing. Always has, always will. Well, that's about it for class today. So maybe we didn't get to actually feel the Earth moving underneath us, but we did cover some pretty serious ground. It may be a small world, but there's a lot of it to see. Studying weather is very cool that way. It can take you to some pretty amazing places on our little planet here. Land and weather work together to shape the world around us, a world that never stops changing. Now, I gotta go, but I'll catch you later, and we'll see what the world looks like then. For the Weather Classroom, I'm Jason. See you around. Talking about something so important that